Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Ray, and today we're going to talk about finding the area of the sector of a circle. Let's start by talking about what a sector is. I always tell my students to think about a pizza slice. That's the shape of a sector of a circle. So here we have a circle, and you can see I have one radius. If I were to place a second radius in the circle, then all of the parts of the circle that fall in between these two radii would form a sector of this circle. And you can see that that is essentially a pizza slice. If you've ever played Trivial Pursuit, that's also the shape of the wedges that you put in when you answer a question right. In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the area of this sector if we know the size of this angle and we know the size of the circle. If we know the radius of the circle, then we can calculate the area of the entire circle, just pi times the radius squared. But in order to calculate the area of the sector, we need to know how much of the circle it fills in. So the bigger you make that angle, the bigger the pizza slice is going to be. In other words, the more area the sector will be. Now the nice thing is that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the area of this sector and the size of this angle. So right now I have a 45 degree angle. So this sector has a certain amount of area. If I double the size of the angle to 90, there's exactly double the amount of area in that sector. If I open it up all the way to 180, notice that half of the circle is the sector. If I open it up all the way to 270, three quarters of the circle is taken up by the sector. At 90, it's just one quarter of the circle. In other words, there's a proportional relationship here, and we can use that relationship to figure out the area of the sector as long as we know the size of the circle. Let's take a look at an example of what I mean. Here we have a circle with a radius of 10, and there's a 120 degree central angle here. So the sector that I want to find is the one that I shaded in blue here, and in order to do that, we just need to know a couple of things. First, we need to know how to find the area of a circle. The area of a circle is pi times the radius squared, which in this case gives us an area of 100 pi. Now that we know that the area of the entire circle is 100 pi, we just need to know how much of that 100 pi is taken up by this sector. 120 is a certain part of the entire rotation. If I went 360 degrees around, then the sector would take up the entire circle. It doesn't. It goes 120 of those 360 degrees. This is the beginning of our proportion. So I can say 120 divided by 360 is equal to the area of the sector divided by 100 pi. Let's talk about the right-hand side of this equation. A is the area of the sector that I'm looking for, this blue region, and 100 pi is the area of the total circle. So what this proportion is saying is, if I open my angle up all the way to 360, right, so it would be 360 over 360, in other words, 1, well then this fraction would also have to be 1. The area would be 100 pi. But if it's less, then whatever the ratio here, it has to be the same ratio here between the area of this sector and the area of the entire circle. From here, all we need to do is cross multiply and solve for a. When I have big numbers like this, I do like to simplify if possible. So for example, with 120 over 360, I could divide the numerator and denominator by 10. That would just give me 12 over 36. I can simplify that even further to just 1 third. Cross multiplying then gives me 3a is equal to 100 pi, which means the area of that sector is 100 pi divided by 3. Now that, of course, is an exact answer, which is the way I always prefer my answers to be. If you're asked to round to the nearest tenth or the nearest hundredth, you're just going to put that into your calculator, and this is approximately 104.7196. So there's a specific example of how I could find the area of a sector. Let's take a look at this problem in general. If I have a circle, and I have a central angle of theta degrees, and I have a radius of r, how big is this sector going to be? Well, if I take theta and divide it by 360, that gives me the ratio of this angle to the full rotation that would be possible. In other words, how much of the rotation all the way around the circle did I go? And that ratio has to be the same as the ratio between the area of my sector and the area of the circle, or pi times the radius squared. If I cross multiply, I get 360a is equal to theta times pi r squared, which means that the area of my sector is theta times pi r squared divided by 360. So this equation is always true, but I wouldn't bother memorizing it. Just go ahead and set up the proportion, and you can solve for it every time. One of the reasons I wouldn't bother memorizing it is because we don't always want it solved for a. We could ask you for theta or a or for the radius. Any one of these three variables we could ask you to solve for. So it's better to just understand the relationship and set up the proportion. Let's take a look at another example solving for the area first. Here we have a circle with a radius of 7 and a central angle of 40 degrees. We know that 40 over 360 has to be the same ratio as the area of our sector to the area of the entire circle, pi times the radius squared. 40 over 360 simplifies to 1 over 9. Cross multiplying then I get 9a equal to 49 pi, and a is 49 pi over 9. That's an exact answer. If you need to round it, it ends up being approximately 17.104.
Here's an example of a problem where we know the area of the sector. They're telling us that it's 20 pi. They're asking us to find the angle to the nearest tenth of a degree. So this angle is what we're looking for. But that's okay, the relationship still holds. Whatever this angle is, if I take the ratio of that angle to one full rotation, so x over 360, that ratio is going to have to be the same ratio as the area of the sector to the area of the entire circle. This time I know the area of the sector, it's 20 pi, and the area of the entire circle is 144 pi. If you're unsure where that 144 came from, just remember that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared, so that's pi times 12 squared, or 144 pi. Now I just need to solve for x. Before I cross multiply, I would look to simplify the right hand side as much as possible. Notice that the pi is divided by pi. So pi over pi is 1, which means I won't have any pi in the answer. I still have 20 over 144, which reduces to 5 over 36, but you might not see that, so this one I'll just live with. Cross multiplying, we get 144x equals 7200, which makes x 50 degrees. Now be careful, they asked for the answer to the nearest tenth, so you actually want to write 50.0 degrees, particularly if this is a standardized test. Let's say we have a problem where they give us the area of the sector, 6 pi, and they give us the angle at the center of the circle, but they want us to find the radius of the circle. So this time we don't know the radius. Can we solve this? Sure, same thing. We're still going to think about the ratio of this angle to one full rotation and compare it to the ratio of this area to the entire circle. So 60 degrees divided by 360 degrees, that ratio has to equal 6 pi, the sector, divided by pi r squared, the area of the entire circle. And this time, r is what we're looking to find. As always, I want to simplify anything that's easily simplified. 60 over 360 is 1 sixth. And on the right hand side, pi divided by pi is 1, so we end up with just 6 over r squared. Cross multiplying gives us r squared equal to 36, which means we have a radius of 6. To wrap this up, this one relationship here can be used to solve for any of these three variables. What you want to remember is the relationship between the area of the sector and the size of the angle that forms it. The bigger that angle gets, the bigger the area gets, and they do so in a direct relationship. So you can take the ratio of the angle over 360, which is one full rotation, and set that equal to the area of the sector divided by the area of the entire circle. And you can use it to solve for any one of the variables in the equation, as long as you can fill in the other two. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.